Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Hunt of Iron 4 Black Eyes with me, Alpha Pi Omega and Empire of Japan. So I wanted to start this episode by pointing out that Italy is once again on the move in Africa and they're actually pushing deeper and deeper into the uh, British colonies which is nice to see. We also know that there is a heavy, heavy battle happening um, in um, in and across the channel or you know above the British Isles and uh, above the channel where the uh, German planes are probably fighting heavily with the British ones. When I was playing the German uh, campaign uh, there was a lot of American planes there as well but uh, from what I saw not that many are. As far as we are concerned though uh, we have stabilized our uh, line. I don't think we're gonna push that much deeper. I wanted to take the mountains but honestly we would lose the benefit of the river here. So the only province where it would probably make sense would be this one but considering there's three American infantry divisions there and uh, uh, and an Indian one I think it might be better if we actually hold it and save our manpower for some other occasions I don't like the fact that we have this area here defended by just four uh, infantry divisions but considering they are now fully dug in and the enemy would be attacking across a river, I think it's fine. I'm even considering pulling out the 16th tank army and sending it back against uh, Sinkyang, which I think we might do at the end of this episode, depending on whether or not it's going to be peaceful. But now we can pull them back into this uh, host province, just so that we see how the AI will react and then will decide on the rest. Uh, more importantly, we started to patrol um, with our submarines the Bay of Bengal and the Strait of uh, Luzon, is it? Uh, no, Strait of Malaga, Strait of, oh, Strait of Luzon, Jesus Christ, I need more coffee. Uh, Bay of Bengal and Strait of Malaga, where we do not really have a big naval supremacy. But I think it's because uh, they have some ships there. Did we send one of our fleets there, though? I thought we... Oh, yes, we did. Okay. Mm, so maybe we can... No, let's give them the Indochinese coast. We're gonna remove the Gulf of Thailand. And where are you guys? You're located over there. Let me put you in here. And do we have a. We do have a patrol navy there. Okay, you guys and you guys. So you should be doing fine. Let me just see. You guys are supposed to be over here. And you're both supposed to be a patrol stationed here. Okay, so hopefully that's gonna... Yeah, they, also, they are also... Okay, hopefully that's gonna fix the issue. Uh, in the meantime, we're also planning an invasion of Australia. We already have the Marines in place. One of our divisions was actually upgraded to uh, the... Well... I would go with uh, Marines with amphibious tank support, but the AI doesn't allow that kind of symbol. Uh, so instead, um, they are just, um, well, this would be mechanized uh, Marines. Eh, well, we are still doing good. I'm actually considering that we would at least get one more of them upgraded. Uh, I don't know if we have enough, and I don't think we have enough for that, though. Let me just see how much we're missing. Yeah, we're short about 20 amphibious tanks. Uh, how fast are we building them? No, I mean, we're at 4.52 per week, so more than one every other day. I could... Oh, wait, do we have? No, we don't. Okay, I wanted to put more uh, production on it, but we don't have the uh, tank capacity. We're building another one. It's going to be ready in 14 days. I mean, we're waiting for the airfields anyway, so there really isn't that much of a problem here. So let's just chill. Uh, what we could do, though, is deploy some more fighters here. Uh, 
for here because we will need to cover our uh, uh, our invasion and I'm pretty sure there's going to be heavy resistance. We have the white bombers here. We have the white fighters over here. So what we can deploy quite a lot of them. Uh, you can handle 200. So let me just deploy 200 over here. And I can deploy uh, 50 more over here. And about 100 more in here. And we'll have them drill. Okay, so 200 of you. Wait, no, that's not them. Uh, these guys. These guys and... One of you. Okay, and you are going to drill. And I'm also considering finding a good airfield like this one and preparing more light bombers or fast bombers if we have those. So we do have a ton of light bombers. 1270 kilometers. That is a decent range. Uh, do we have some fast bombers? Those are carrier ones. Carrier closer support. You have only 575 kilometers range. You have the navy bombers, yeah, but they're. They have a huge range, but that one is not gonna be very useful. Uh, the medium bombers, 1400 kilometers. Okay, let's deploy you guys. It's gonna be 300 of you. Yeah, I think that is a big enough range for them to be able to provide Corsair support. But just so that we are sure, let us also deploy some of the medium bombers. They have slightly more from what I saw. So they might be better. Navy bombers. Where are they? Here. Medium bombers, 557. I mean, I mean, we can. There really isn't anything that's stopping us. We have excessive, excessive amounts of fuel. So it's not like we're missing anything. Okay, so in this area we're fighting, and we wanted to move our units elsewhere, but I'm not entirely sure we'll be able to. Could we upgrade this airfield? We could. Okay. So we can upgrade that one as well in Bihar and put more air points here. At least some fighters. But without additional airfields, I don't think we'll be very successful. I mean, the only place where we would really suffer... Well... Oh, we do have an airfield here in Nepal. 300 aircraft, so let me just send you over there and you can fly in here. And the guys can fly in here and I can take 100 of the most experienced one into here. Because you do have a range. And let's send 100 here as well. Okay, we'll see how that's gonna go. No fights happening, that's good. Uh, we sank some transports. What about you guys? You're patrolling and demolishing, that's good. So I think it might be time to start uh, taking aggressive steps for this invasion to be already at a moment's notice. So you guys are ready over here. So let me just put you all into this port. Okay, where are you? Over here. So you guys cannot stay in there. You guys are already here. The supply. Yeah, this, this is better and I think we would be able to do it eventually if we wanted to from there quick enough. 
in fights happening here. The AI is not reacting to us moving our tanks, uh, which is honestly great. These are mountains, but we already know that our units are not, especially against these guys. This can be fun. Uh, so let me just put you over here. Immediately gonna complain that there's not enough supply. I am 100% sure about that, but we won't really care all that much. So there was a combat here where we sank. Oh yeah, they still got some light cruisers, but they're not doing that much of a good job because we still managed to sink a fair amount of them. Uh, production is going well. Yeah, we're, we've lost a lot of fighters. Are we in a deficit or... No, we just have tankets. Oh, and we still don't have the flying boats. I've been talking about flying boats since the very beginning. Oh, lightning killed over North India. Ah, oh, that's bad. Okay, so how's it going? Uh, we now... I have 100% air superiority over here somehow. I don't know how we manage that. Jesus Christ. This is really not going well. Okay, you know what? Uh, I mean, we're shooting them down. We have a higher air defense and agility than they do. Though, is it really necessary? I don't think we even have any... No, we do. Okay, so this is... For some reason, this is not part of Nepal. That kind of sucks. Uh, okay, we get another Shimano Shubitai. So we're gonna send you... Italy demands Anatolian naval bases. Yeah, we can send you to the Phoenix Island. The 1915 Treaty of London promised Turkish territory in Anatolia for Italy. Other treaties would take precedence, but the promises have not been forgotten by Italian leadership. Benito Mussolini has publicly stated that due to the strategic importance of the Anatolian coast, Kingdom of Italy fully intends to take what rightfully belongs to Italy. That reminds me, I was reading your comments yesterday on episode, I think, 117. You guys are really mad at <laughs> the peace deal. The fact that Republic of China exists is really uh, hated by you guys. But, I mean, I don't mind it that much. I mean, I see it as a sort of a puppet state uh, that we will eventually dismantle. They got a ton of troops, but, uh, you know, who wants that? You guys wanted me to give it to Mongolia or sort of. I, I really don't care. It's, but it's funny how, how much you hate it. You know, I... This is why I don't like uh, the new peace conferences. Uh, the things that it does are just ridiculous sometimes, but uh, seeing you hate it so much is kind of interesting. Uh, okay, so we finished the Type 98 100 millimeter uh, light artillery. We're gonna go with the 90, Type 96 15 centimeter Hobbitzer. I mean, I'm not happy with the result as well. It's not what I would choose, but I just, I don't know, I, don't really care all that much. They're beaten. And, you know, whether it's called Mongolia or Republic of China doesn't really bother me that much. But I, again, I understand the hate. It's just, um, it's interesting to see. Oh my god, their liability is just. Okay, the propellant charging improves the viability and the ammunition lowers it so we could go like this in the beginning carriage update and what would be the max viability 46 it's still better than the default so range finding and AT ammunition about the proponent charge at max okay type 98 DPG we're gonna invest our arm experience into that one Uh, let me just change the obsolete artillery piece to that one. 
Where are you? Okay, this one is the wrong one. This one. So 2046 needs to be uh, fixed. So I'm gonna take two from you. And we're finally starting to get a decent amount of heavy artillery here. So let me just put uh, three more here and five more here. I'm gonna add two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we need to take like so. So I'm gonna be producing about 10 per day eventually. And you're about 10 per day, so that's fine. That is fine. So no fights going on here. The tanks are going, that's great. Okay, so what about here? We can definitely advance. You guys are gonna go here. You will get in here, you're gonna go here, you will attack over here. Yeah, we're taking Rangoon. They're just, they're almost done. Uh, the uprising has been eliminated. Uh, okay, let's add to the last factory here. We got the capacity, so it's fine. So how's the air situation now? We managed to control this area, which is great. Managed to control this area, which is great. Here, there, yeah, I'm not... I mean, we sh we're shooting them down at almost the same number as they are shooting us down. Oh, and then even an additional factor. Why did we get that one? Um, well, they would like to put it on the cats, but we can't. Or the naval tanks or amphibious tanks, but we can't. Cool support. Uh, we're gonna be bleeding out fighters quite a lot though, so adding two more factories on those might not be a bad choice. Food sale uh, to Lebanon, sure, sure, I don't mind that at all. And we're gonna use the. Okay, wait, I can now give you the organization first. Field Marshal Shinosuke Yegami. And the Northern Army Group. You guys, the motorized can get a motorized expert. Which is amazing. You guys you have the camera army. And the camera expert. Let's give you the aggressive assaulter. The breakthrough is gonna be good for you. And that's about it. And we sink some of these guys? No. Oh, was that the casemate? I haven't... Yeah, it was the casemate. It was the casemate, which should allow us to get the... Yep, the Type 97 has a Type 3 Honey 3, which is a tank destroyer. Which can be upgraded over here. Type 4 superstructure. Okay, so let's just activate this one and see what it's like. Because we don't have a tank destroyer available at this point. So this one, Type 3 Honey. What's your heart attack? 11.21, that is just awful. Uh, our medium tank, which is which one? The Type 3 has 21. Though he costs twice as much. Can we do something with you? Extra radio. But Amorak. Field repair kit. Fuel tank. You can have the machine gun. Or defensive modules. You have this one. Okay, nothing can be added here. Oh, you could get the coaxial machine gun. Okay, that's interesting. And what about ammo? You're using the 75mm one. It just 
can get it. Six type two type ninety nine. Yeah, none of these are applicable to you. Can you weld it? Not riveted. Okay, a little bit more extra armor and slope. Yeah, but your heart attack is still just you know awful. Gearbox could be improved. Yeah, but heart attack is just too low for a tank destroyer. This is absolutely obsolete. I'm still gonna keep it, uh, but uh, we'll just use it as a, you know, what if and comparison to the other one that we're gonna get, Type 5 Cut Top. So 75mm 56 Type 5. We can't get that one, and I don't know why still. That sucks. There should be a little tooltip telling you what kind of technology that is. Because that's this one. No, wait, this one. Yeah, this one. Which requires this. Which requires this one. Which requires 57mm experimental. Wait, that sounds like it could be uh, anti air or anti tank, something like that. Yeah, it's this one. Okay, so. Here we can figure it out. It's a Type 100 or something that I was looking for last time that I couldn't find. Uh, so the Type 57 experiment that we're gonna get, I would like to start using the medium uh, art, medium anti-tank uh, for some of our units. Because if we attack UK there might be some... And you know, even in Australia, Jesus Christ, there's gonna be so many American divisions there, it's gonna be a hellhole. Okay, so you know what you can get? Okay, and this is great. You have two Type 5 chassis. Which one are you supposed to use? <laughs> God damn it, game. Couldn't you make it a little bit easier for me? Uh... Okay, well, that's research to gun stabilization. That one is good for everyone. Motion of vehicles causes unwanted movements of the guns mounted in them, which must be minimized if a gun is to be able to be fired on the move with any chance of hitting their targets. However, the effects of vehicle motion can be minimized by gun stabilization systems, which are designed to maintain the spatial orientation of guns in spite of the pitch, yaw, and roll of the moving vehicle. Okay, well, that one we're gonna use. Okay, care to explain? Oh, it's Marsh. Okay, just go, you guys. Okay, this will require a bit of Uh, a bit of extra work. Burma has capitulated yet again. Yet again, they capitulated because we took Rangoon. So we're just gonna take this time to eliminate them. They have no port, so these units here are done. Those are the poor Indian divisions that weren't evacuated when they had the choice. And also a little American division here, the Viking division. Poor swords. Okay. So how's the situation here? Four hundred twenty-nine. Now, with most of them here, we are increasing the possibility of us uh, doing more. Okay, Kamikaze. Yeah, we would need a surrender progress. And oh, that sucks. I was wondering what the Kamikaze strike air mission is. Do we have it listed here? Name control. 
Ah, here it is. Kamikaze Strike. Perform Kamikaze attacks on enemy ships in the area. This will greatly increase damage, but also increase your own losses. If executed at night, this mission has a much lower chance of being detected, but it suffers a penalty. Ah, okay. That is nice. They added an entirely new uh, thing you could do. Uh, I like that. To our assembly plans. Okay, let's go with removing the zero. Armament change. One 13.2mm Type 3 machine gun was added in... Wait, it's specific to A6M3 and A6M5C. Don't we have those? I think we already researched those. Uh, it's an interceptor. We have a lot of... Yeah, this one we don't need. We are already past that. And I think this one is the motor roll. A6M7. So that makes no sense. A6M3. So that one is even earlier one. A6M3. This is this one, the carrier fighter. Yeah, we're past that. Way past that, actually. Actually, that reminds me. Did we upgrade it? Enough. Well, could have given a bit more ammo capacity or fuel capacity, which lowers reliability, agility, or drop tank. Ah, we don't need that. Uh, lack of range. You should. So let's start going with the months you have an aircraft development, which will give us the ability in Manchukuo to develop heavy aircraft independent from us, and we will get two air assembly plans in Kirin. Is that in Manchukuo? I think that might be in Manchukuo. Kirin. Yep, so they will get some air assembly plans, and they can build their own aircraft. Oh, hello, they're trying to attack us. Yeah, this is where the heavy attack or hard attack would become really useful. Because we cannot really pierce them. So the medium tanks would be good here. To repel those. Okay, and we're actually advancing here. Low echelon support. Speaking of aircraft. Hello, lovelies. Dispersed fighting. Fighter detection plus 20%. Adopting a more dispersed formation allows the same number of planes to patrol a greater area. We'll take it. We'll take it and we will not complain. Not once. Okay, airfields are starting to pop up, aren't they? No, they're not. No, they are. Yeah. Okay, airbase in the Aru Islands. You're drilling. You guys are drilling. You guys are drilling. So are you. So are you. Get the closer support. What about the bombers? The red bombers. We have 500 fast bombers here which are drilling. And they have a, yeah, they have a huge range, so they'll be definitely able to cover our attack. Cool, this is gonna be nice. Once they finish their drills, we are going to move them there. Yeah, well, this is a little bit iffy. Okay, so what if we send you guys here? Agent captured. In Australia, okay. Yeah, we have total air superiority here, so let's move you guys in here and push harder for that. Which actually reminds me, how well do we know Australia right now? Pretty goddamn well. That's not bad, 49%. Jesus, they got 
tons of wow look at that yeah looks like we're gonna land in the most inhospitable area of them all would it make more sense to attack melbourne where they have most of their factories oh you know what we could not i know this is done. We should first take Tasmania and attack from Tasmania. That actually seems like a... Because when we look at the intelligence, all of this area is useless. It's this area that's very valuable. It's going to be hell though to actually do something. It might be maybe better to actually pull them back here. And then make a sneaky back attack to Tasmania and into Melbourne. Because they won't really have defenses here anymore because they'll pull all of them northwards. Uh, well, okay, it also makes sense. There is an airfield to Darwin which we can expand later on. I'll have to think about it, but you know, I never f thought to check. But it's logical, like this area is the most industrialized. Just look at the cities. Hmm. Well, okay, I guess I guess it would make sense. And with the fall of Burma, we can actually take the motorized and send them there as well. Which will greatly improve. Yeah, we'll have to. That's that's what I wanted. We'll have to establish a couple of zones where we will land and operate. And we'll just keep doing more and more naval invasions into unprotected flanks and take them down that way. We don't even have to take the central area. We can just push the Americans into the desert and let them burn there for all I care. Anyway, see you in the next episode.